Hi there, today I'm really excited to be finally trying out the Raspberry Pi 5. I've got a 4 gig version and along with that I've got the Pyroman 5 mini tower case which is super cool. So let's have a look at how it runs Home Assistant and what are some of the other things that we could run on it too. So SunFounder did send me the Pi and the case, but they didn't sponsor this video, so the thoughts are all my own. So this case is really cool. I like the mix of metal and perspex, these RGB fans, full-size HDMIs instead of the micro ones, and it's got this safe power on-off button. The instructions that came with this device were really good. All of the parts were uniquely labeled in their little packets and were easy to find. And the drawings showed quite clearly what you needed to do. You start off by inserting the standoffs into the base. Make sure that you select the right sizes as they are different. Then you connect the SD card converter that goes in there quite easily. That is followed by the power board, which is connected on the other side, which also manages the HDMI creating them to full size ports. After that, you install this in the base. Next, install the power switch and plug it in. There are three little heat pads that need to get stuck on. And then you take your heat sinks with the fan, put it on top and press the two little plastic plugs down in their springs to seat them nicely on top of the Pi. I'm really impressed with the cooling of this device. The Pi 5 seems to have some real control over the fan with different levels as per the heat. Next, we install the NVMe slot. This is installed with a ribbon cable. Make sure not to damage the cable while you're installing it. There's also a ribbon cable which is used to install the little screen which is connected to the same point. Screw in the two fans to the back of the other component and then put the two components together. All you need to do to finish it off is then take your two Perspex covers Screw them on nice and carefully. Don't over tighten, which may crack the Perspex. Once you're done, you'll see what an amazing effect it gives with those colored RGBs. So this device looks really cool when it's all finished. The alignment of the plastic and the metal is perhaps not perfect in some areas, but certainly good enough. The little screen that comes with it, I have tried to get this working. It's currently only available as far as I know when you're running this as a Raspberry Pi desktop, which I'm not planning to, but I did fiddle around, but I couldn't quite get it working. We've got a nice little SD slot, and then we've got our little eye here, which is great. It looks like your real little computer control light. The power button is great and we're able to easily shut down and start up the Pi without having to plug out the cable or go in and log in to do it. Secondly, we've got an infrared controller here, which could be used in certain instances. Having a look inside, the Perspex gives us a really cool view of what's going on. And the Ice Cube, as you'll see, is doing a really great job. So those two RGB fans are spinning away and they're quite quiet. On the so of course, as you can imagine, the first thing I wanted to load onto this Pi was Home Assistant. I loaded it up and look at that temperature, less than 30 degrees, fantastic cooling with this little case. Next up, let's do a restart, which is a real test to see how quickly this is running the Pi. So we'll go along to system here, we'll go restart home assistant, we'll go click one and two and three and four and five and six and seven and eight and nine and 10 and 11. So 11 seconds, back up, started. So really impressed with the speed of the Pi 5 versus the 4 that I was running before. Octoprint is another really great option to run on your Pi and I'll leave a link in the description showing you all about Octoprint. Another great use for a Raspberry Pi is a media player. So we can go along, select our Raspberry Pi, go to Media Player OS's and we'll use the Libra Elec which is a smart TV operating system. So we can go along here, we can select our card, and then we go, yes, we want to write to it. Now we go through the setup. So press next, next, 
networking we've got it hardwired so it's already connected up sharing and remote access we can allow both of these so now we've got access to movies that we can upload to this device we can also hook this up so we can select tv shows on here we can access music music videos tv radio games add-ons and all sorts of cool things RetroPie is another great solution to run on a Raspberry Pi. Unfortunately, it's not quite ready for the Pi 5 yet, but I'm sure it will be available soon. Check out all the great titles that you can find for this option. Anyway, that's all for now. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think of the Raspberry Pi 5 and the case, and I'll check you out in the next one. Bye for now.